Okay, with this category, which is encode, we go into it and we can change the settings for each camera. Now, of course, we've got selected is channel one. Channel one is the first camera here, which we've got active. Now, we can change the settings for each one individually, which helps a lot because you might want, I don't know, more quality on one than the other. So, let's have channel one. Shows the compression, which is H.264, then the resolution, which is set to SIF. Now, SIF runs at 25 frames per second, which is shown here. This can be reduced, although I wouldn't suggest it. I'd keep it at 25 frames per second, as this is real, real time. Then with resolution, you can change that to D1. D1 is a much higher and more crisp resolution. However, it will sacrifice frames per second. So you want to might probably want to find a good balance between which one you need and what you want. Have a look at them, you know, choose them through that. So changing back to SIF, we go back to frame rate, and as you can see, we can now change it to 25 frames, 25 frames per second. You can change the bit rate between CBR and VBR. And the bit rates are shown here, but kilobytes per second and whatnot. Uh, audio, video with overlay snapshots. These are really simple. These are just options that you can have as well to add to the camera. Now, with the encoding here, it says extreme, uh, extra stream one. Now, with the streaming, that means through the internet. That's when you view it over the internet. Now, with streaming over the internet, you're gonna have a couple of options that you're gonna go through. QSIF is a low resolution, but it's not super super low it's not like you can't recognize what's on the camera the reason people have it on QCIF for internet streaming is because it's easier for the DVR to stream it through the internet and then to the computer you can also view these locally on a local network but if you unit through the internet with having on SIF resolution you can your internet could struggle to send you the frames in good time and it could be a bit jumpy so people leave it on QCIF set the frames to 25 frames per second Okay, now going back to the resolution and frames per second, as you can see here, we've got, like I say, frames per second, but a lot of people advertise DVRs, and they're very expensive. For D1 across each channel, as 25, 25 frames per second per channel. Now, that is high resolution running on real time for each camera. Now, these DVRs that do that are very expensive. They're used for, like, petrol stations, or jewelry stores, or casinos. Think places like that where they need the highest resolution. Okay, so moving on, go back into the settings menu, then we'll go on to schedule. As usual, has the little basic description at the bottom. Go into schedule, and as you can see, we have channel one. This can be changed to channel eight, and you can actually schedule when your cameras record, how often they record. You can just change them options. It's really quite simple with a pre-record option as well, so you can capture a couple of seconds before you've actually scheduled it. Okay, so moving on to the next category, we go back again, and then we're back into the settings menu, into network. Now this is where it can get tricky, especially for people who've never done this before. Okay, now. First of all, what I'd like to do is suggest that people who want to do this so they can view it from elsewhere is get a static IP address from your serv internet service provider. So, for example, if you say you've got your internet with Virgin Media, you want to give them a ring and ask for an, a static IP address. Now, a static IP address is used so that you can connect to your DVR from elsewhere just by typing the IP address into a browser or using a, an application, say from iPhone, an iPhone application is getting very popular for viewing CCTV with. Now, IP addresses that you are given that's unique to you only and your network change by default. So you want them to go static. So, right, what we have here is an IP address that's given to the, the actual DVR. This IP address here is a private IP address, which is, this This can only be used in your network. If you type 192.168, whatever characters, follow that in someone else's network, it'll bring up a completely different uh, device or none at all. So this one's got, by default, it's set to 192.168.1.8. Now I'm not connected to the internet with this DVR at the moment. Uh, what a lot of people do, now, like say you can enter this manually so it doesn't change or anything if the DVR is switched off, but most people leave them on all the time. So you've got IP address, the subnet mask, now this can be these can be changed no problem, as well as the gateway. Now the gateway is obviously your router, so you'd want to change them as well. What we suggest you do is enter DHCP, and it will automatically be given one from given these options from the router. The router will decide which options these get. Now as long as the DVR doesn't turn off, and turn back on again, 
that it shouldn't change and it should be given these anyway. As you can see down here, we've got different ports. We've got three different ports. This is very helpful with DVRs as it reduces bottlenecking with data streaming across the internet. So with three, three ports, it's going to distribute them all across three ports. Then you've got maximum connections, uh, preferred DNS, alternate DNS. This is all, these are all fine. Okay, so with the IP addresses, now these, like I say, this one's private to you. Now, what you need to get is the external one from your internet service provider now these are unique to you nobody else can have the same one as you now like I say if the dynamic they can change you want a static one now be careful because some of them don't understand what it is you actually want from them and they'll say oh it's 192.168 no this is yours this is your private this is your private network one well anyway with regards to the internet setup what we're going to do soon is get a fully fully detailed uh, video clip on how exactly to set one up from scratch anyway moving on we've got the like you can available to download through a local area network this is like data from your DVR uh, you can choose different there's different options to these uh, whether to enable or disable and then you've got the advanced settings which is IP filter NTP server which is 6 to 60 on this uh, multicast there's a fair few advanced options on this uh, DVR with regards to these options. Now with the email, that's so you can set it up so that if there's an alert on your DVR, i.e. you have motion detection, you can receive an email. Now if you set up email on a phone, which is usually a, a later phone such as uh, Android compatible or iPhone, something like that, they can actually send an email to your phone and it's much, much easier than getting it from you to your computer. Then we have like FTP, which is obviously Final Transfer Protocol and then the alarm server that's for alarms okay now with more advanced the use advanced settings uh, we've got multicast like I say we've already covered multicast then we've got PPOE these PPOE settings that we can enable or disable now with DDNS this is an alternative to actually having a static IP address so that once your uh, dynamic IP address changes it updates a, it's updated on a server and it will tell your DVR about it. It's, it's much better. It's very, very good as an alternative. So I don't know if you, for some reason, can't have a static IP address. It's a good alternative. And then obviously you've got the settings there. Okay. Moving on from this category, from networking. Like I say, there will be a video of this as well, more advanced video. So now we're on to alarm. Go on to alarm. Now this DVR supports alarm inputs. This is very helpful. I mean, you can use. Uh, there's two ways you can do it. You can do it through the image on a DVR or you can do it through a PIR uh, activation for alarm. Now this is many options on this with uh, tours, snapshots, uh, you can have the email sent to you when uh, an alarm happens, uh, what periods, it's a very very it's a well laid out setup. I mean some DVRs can be very very difficult and very technical. This one's not, this one's quite user friendly. Okay, so moving on now, like I say, this is for a physical setup uh, through a PIR. Now, moving back, we go and see detect. Now, this is motion detection through the DVR itself. This can be set through each channel. So here we have a channel, each one you want to set up, one to eight, obviously. Uh, it can, on this DVR, it is actually enabled. You can select uh, different sensitivities through this DVR. Okay, so even though motion detection is enabled on this DVR, where it's red, that means uh, motion detection it won't pick up so let's change it so let's say the car here if we highlight that there means any motion detected around the a car immediately will trigger recording and can trigger alarm as well which is good uh, moving on we've got sensitivities from one to six one being the lowest and six being the highest like I say again we have the uh, set times and periods that's fine uh, like I say, with options with PTZ activation, uh, that's if you have a PTZ. We don't currently have one set up on this DVR. Uh, and then email send, like I say, you'd need to set that up in the settings to, for the uh, email server and whatnot. But we'll get onto that later. Okay, so moving on from this, uh, go back into the menu again. Now that we're moving on to the pan tilt zoom now. This is uh, important for if you have a pan PTZ camera. Now we don't have one set up on this DVR for now. Uh, now, like I say, you select what channel it's set up to. Now, then you need to check your camera for a PTZ and see what protocols it does support, what it doesn't. Obviously, select to match to what it doesn't does or does support uh, address um, and the data bit rates and whatnot. Uh, this is 
all options you need to set up with your camera because if you select a protocol that the camera doesn't understand it won't happen okay moving onwards and upwards moving back we we'll go back into the settings menu again now on display this is really helpful this is just changes a quite a good few options with the actual OSD uh, and the GUI okay with the transparency you can change that so that you can actually see behind this menu here so you don't miss anything even though it's live and still recording and you're having a dabble in the settings and whatnot okay now again you, you you have options here for like uh, overlay information and time display now for legal reasons a lot of people have to have time display on uh, on their cameras now channel display that shows the channel name on uh, each channel with uh, and resolution of course here now resolution this is where a couple of people get confused because they get a DVR example one of these and it'll have the resolution set at 1280 by 1024 that is a square panel resolution for widescreen, because if you plug it into a widescreen monitor, say 19 inch, not all of them will support this resolution and it will come up with, I don't know, error or um, can't display, things like that. What you need to do is connect the um, DVR to an alternate display, change it to 1280 by 720. This will display on a wide, that's a widescreen resolution. So leaving it at 1024 as I'm using a square, resol square resolution screen. We move on to the next bit, which is enable tour. Enabling a tour is another way of saying sequence. So it sequences the cameras through and through and through. Now here it says interval, that's the time it'll sit on the camera before it goes to the next one. Here on view one, now this is important because this helps you choose what cameras you do and do, don't want on sequence. So if somebody else is sat there and you've got cameras in, say, a warehouse, you can untick them. So five and six, for example, could have cameras where you don't want other people to see them. So you'd untick them and they would not appear in the sequence. Now the only way to change the sequence is to get back into the menu. However, you would need to log in. So if someone can't log in, they can't change the sequence and they cannot see the cameras you don't want them to see. This is very, very helpful. Now obviously that's view one, that's each individual camera. With view four, that will show like the first four cameras in a grid, then the next four cameras in a grid, and view nine is just all of them, so it won't sequence them. Then you've got the motion tour type, we've got it obviously that's set to view one, uh, and the alarm tour type. Okay, moving on again, we can go back, and now the next one is reasonably simple, this is default, this is dead easy. This just shows you options that you might want to default, so you say you've changed the settings and you're not sure, something's not right, you can choose the category to actually default, so say I don't know, change the setting in display, I wasn't sure, and I think it's in display, the setting that I've changed, I don't want it there, untick the rest, and flick it to display, and then click OK. Now, if you buy these from UK Security Shop, they're actually sent with all the original defaults. They're not altered unless you purchase them with a monitor because the monitors are widescreen and it will, the uh, resolution will be changed for you so you don't have to mess around doing that.